In this challenging problem, we have a pretty complex system, so we'll want to carefully consider what the problem is asking. So we have two conducting spheres held at a constant distance apart from one another, and the electrostatic force between them is going to change in two phases. In the first phase, uh, the two charges, call them Q1, Q2, which are 50 centimeters apart, by the way, uh, experience a force of 0 0.108 newtons, and, and the force is directed towards each other. So I'll draw them as closing in arrows. And since the force between them is attractive, that means they have opposite signs. So one of them is going to be positive, and one of them is negative. Now since the problem is asking for the initial charges on the spheres, we know that there is going to be a negative charge and a positive charge, which is what we're tasked with finding. And this describes phase A of the problem. Now at some point, the two charges are going to be connected by a conducting wire, and then the charges on each of them will change. In this phase B of the problem, uh, the charges, which are at the same distance apart, 50 centimeters, or 0.5 meters, uh, now have a force of 0 0.0360 newtons between them, except now that force is directed away from each other. And since that force is directed away from each other, since the force between them is repulsive, that means they both must have the same sign. So now both charges are either positive or they're both negative, one of the two. We don't know which one, so I'm not going to label either of them as such yet, but we just know that they have the same sign. And I'm labeling the force between them now as F sub B. So if we want to figure out the charges, let's first analyze the forces between the particles in both phases. Now recall that Coulomb's law states that the electrostatic force between two charged particles is equal to K times the two charges divided by the square of the distance between them. Now often we will write like absolute value signs uh, over the charges because that will make our analysis easier in some cases, especially in the case of more complex situations and more complex arrangements of particles. But this particular case is actually pretty easy on us. Because we only have two charged particles that we're dealing with at any point in time, the system is actually simple enough that we won't need to worry about that. In fact, let's leave out the absolute values entirely and instead focus on the conventional signs for electrostatic forces, where an attractive force with two charges of opposite signs will be negative and a repulsive force where two charges have the same sign is going to be positive. So for example, on the force in phase A, since the two charges are directed towards each other and they have opposite signs, that means that we have a positive charge being multiplied by a negative charge. And since the product of a positive value and a negative value is negative, this uh, F sub A is going to be negative here. Now let's discuss F sub B, the electrostatic force acting between the particles in the second phase of the problem. Remember that when two conducting objects make contact with one another, uh, the charges between them are equalized, meaning uh, the charge in each individual particle here will be equal to half of the sum of their total charges, meaning the individual charge on Q sub 1, for instance, will be equal to uh, Q1 plus Q2 divided by 2. Of course, this idea applies to both charges, so both Q1 and Q2 will have a charge of Q1 plus Q2 divided by 2. So since we're multiplying those two charges by each other, I'll just square the whole thing, and of course divide it by R squared, which is the same in both cases. This looks pretty messy right now, but I can simplify it a bit by uh, squaring this 2 so that it's a 4, and then bringing it into the denominator with R squared. Like so. So now we have an F sub A, where the two charges are multiplied by each other, and an F sub B, where the two charges are being added to one another. Now if you're experienced using the quadratic formula, you might be able to see where we're going with this. Now we have enough values given to us that we can actually solve for these products and sums of the charges. For example, based on the F sub A formula, we can find Q1 times Q2. Uh, we multiply R squared by both sides and divide the negative K by both sides as well. 
and we have that q1 times q2 is equal to r squared times f sub a divided by negative k. Now we can plug in our values for this in SI units, of course. So for r squared, we'll use uh, 0.5 meters squared. For f sub a, we use 0 0.108 newtons. And for k, the Coulomb constant, we use 8.99 times 10 to the ninth power of a newton meter squared per Coulomb squared. And this value is about uh, and this value is approximately negative 3 times 10 to the negative 12th coulomb squared. Now, of course, there are more significant digits than this. I'm only writing it with one significant figure so that it's easier to read and simpler to keep track of. But remember that when you're actually performing the problem, be sure to preserve the exact value of this in your calculator so that we can use it for later. Now let's solve for q1 plus q2. We multiply both sides of this by 4r squared, then we divide both sides by k, and then since q1 plus q2 is still surrounded by a square, we'll just square root the whole thing. So q1 plus q2 is equal to the square root of 4r squared times f sub b divided by k. Uh, we can simplify this slightly by realizing that 4 and r squared are both equally square rooted, and so that gets simplified to 2r times the square root of fb over k. And once again, plugging in the values we have, 0.5 meters for R, uh, 0 0.0360 newtons for FB, and the same value, the same constant for K. And, and by the way, keep in mind that we're using SI units, so use 0.5 meters, don't use 50 centimeters. And this gets us about 2 times 10 to the negative 6th coulombs. Once again, I'm rounding a bit here, but make sure you keep the exact value in your calculator. So now we found ourselves a system of equations where q1 times q2 is negative 3 times 10 to the negative 12th coulomb squared, and q1 plus q2 is equal to 2 times 10 to the negative 6th power of coulombs. We still need to actually find out what these charges are. So if, we're first, if we first want to find q1, for instance, then let's solve equation number 1 here for q2. So we'll call it equation 3, and if we just simply divide both sides of equation 1 by q1, then we find that q2 is equal to the value for equation 1 divided by q1. Now let's try plugging in this q2 number into equation 2. And as per equation 2, 2 times 10 to the negative 6th power of coulombs is equal to q1 plus q2, though in this case q2 is negative, 3 times 10 to the negative 12th coulombs cubed, coulomb squared, divided by q1. We can simplify this a bit and get rid of the q1 of the denominator by multiplying all of these terms by q1. And lastly, if we multiply both sides by this leftmost term here and set the whole thing equal to 0, and now it's much more clear how we can use the quadratic formula to solve this, assuming we take uh, this to be term A, this to be term B, and this to be term C. And as per the quadratic formula, Q1 should be equal to uh, the B term, or the negative B term, plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4 times A times C, and all of it is divided by 2 times the A term. Now depending on whether or not you use the plus or the minus, we of course get two values for this, as per usual, the quadratic formula. And we get an answer of either 3 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs, or negative 1 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. So we get a positive and a negative value. Now we are talking about Q1 here, and we did sort of decide at the very start here that Q1 would be positive. So it makes sense that we would say, alright, well this is the positive value, so Q1 must be equal to this. But keep in mind, there wasn't actually anything in the problem indicating that Q1 should be positive. I chose that completely arbitrarily. And technically, depending on how I defined the situation from the start, uh, Q1 could very well be either of these values, positive or negative. So it looks like, since both of these answers seem to be technically valid, it looks like we've just solved for the charges of both values here. Uh, but we can take this a step further and prove it a, a bit more rigorously. 
If we do go by the assumption we made at the very beginning and say that this right here is Q1, uh, then we should be able to prove that this is the value of the other charge from that. According to equation 3 up here, Q2 is equal to this value divided by Q1. So we should be able to plug in what we just found for Q1 and solve for that. And sure enough, we find that this value is negative 1 times 10 to the power of negative 6 coulombs. If we were to use the second value we got in place of the one we used, then we would end up getting 3 times 10 to the power of negative 6 coulombs. So both answers work just as well. This demonstrates to us that these two charges right here are both of the charges that we were looking for. So part A, the negative charge, is negative 1, and rounding to three significant figures here, so 0 0.00. This is why you'd want to preserve your uh, full values in the calculator earlier. Uh, times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. And part B, the positive charge, is equal to 3.00 times 10 to the power of 6 coulombs. And these are our values for both of the charges in their initial states.